Welcome to Museum After Hours at Worcester City Art Gallery and Museum. Tonight we're going to be saying hello to autumn in the best possible way. We're going to be having acoustic music in our art gallery and then we'll be making cocktails with our mixologist Tonic Bar. And then we'll be having a fun and cosy cocktail and craft session to release your inner creatives. Enjoy. First up, grab your cocktail shaker and let's make your first cocktail for the evening. Here's what you'll need. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm from Tonic and we're going to go through an old fashioned today. So first of all, we're going to chill our glass. It's going to make sure that when the drink comes into it, it's going to be the right temperature and it's going to keep the integrity of the drink the whole time. So this drink is actually based upon prohibition when they had such raw spirits that were essentially moonshine and they had to add sugars and bitters and dilute them just to make them bearable to drink. Um, it's one of the reasons why it's called an old fashioned. So typically you'd use a rye whiskey. We're gonna be using Basil Hayden today, which has a very high rye content for a typical bourbon. Um, we find it one of the best ones that you can use. So first of all, we're gonna use a nice healthy amount, which is 60 mils. to add just a small amount of brown sugar which we make our syrups ourselves here which we simply use the one-to-one -one ratio um, and you cook it off boil it a little bit and then you'll have your sugar syrup so we're just gonna have a nice little seven to ten mil and then next and definitely the most sort of important stuff is the bitters this is angostura and this is angostura orange now i've got the angostura bottle of the orange just here um, what these do, they add umami and depth to the flavours of this drink, but also cuts through the dilution as well. We like to do a three to two here, so we're going to go one, two, three, and we're going to add two of the orange. Next, we're just going to fill up the glass with ice. So we use a stirring glass so we can monitor how much dilution we're putting into it. As this is a drink that is served over ice, so you wanna make sure you hit a perfect point that you aren't already adding a diluted drink over ice. So we're just gonna start stirring the drink down. And all this is doing is mixing the sugars, the bourbon and the bitters together. And you'll almost start smelling it, actually, when you start doing this, which is one of my favorite, favorite parts about it. And we're just gonna have a quick little taste test. I'd say it needs just a touch more. I'm going to discard the crushed ice, but you can use cubed if you're at home as well. It's, as long as the glass is nice and cold, you're going to make sure that drink stays the way you want it to. We like to use uh, larger ice cubes for this style of drink as it will help with the less dilution. Get your single strainer. Gonna pour that over gently. And last but not least is the orange. Now we want to make sure we've cut this nice and fine. And we're gonna spritz that over the top. We'll brown the glass so you get all them orange oils while you're drinking it. And then we're just gonna pop that inside. And there we have it. Classic old fashioned. And now, sit back and enjoy the ambiance and great acoustics of the art gallery with a fabulous musical performance. So I'm Becky Cameron. Um, I'm going to play you guys a few original songs. This first one's called Make Believe. It's about someone that lives on a submarine sometimes.
cocktail number two, here's the ingredients list. Hello, my name is Lee and today I'll be going through a Kentucky Mule, which is a take on a Moscow Mule and you swap out the vodka for American bourbon. Today we'll be using Woodford Reserve, which is quite a sweet bourbon as it has a high corn content. That helps cut through the sharpness of the ginger quite nicely. In the glass we'll add 50ml of bourbon, a couple dashes of Angostura bitters. We will add about 200ml of fresh ginger beer, 10ml of lime, and 10ml of sugar. And the nice thing about this drink is that you do not need to stir or shake this. You can simply build it in your glass, which is perfect for home use. Simply add some ice. Gently stir to mix. And then garnish however you like. Today I'm going to add a little bit of crushed ice on top. Add my straw a couple slices of fresh ginger and a fresh mint leaf. And there you have it, a Kentucky Mule. And now, inspired by our collection, grab your drink and enjoy a cocktail and craft session. Hi, my name's Kate Brooks and I'm an artist and I'm also the manager of a creative reuse charity called Worcestershire Resource Exchange. Um, I'm here at the gallery this evening to um, show you how to make your own beautiful uh, moth out of reclaimed materials as part of your craft and cocktail evening. Um, the reason why I picked moths is because I know at the, at the museum they have a beautiful collection of insects that live downstairs. They don't bring them up anymore and put them on show because apparently they're so fragile and actually as beautiful as they are, we kind of find it a little bit disturbing these days that somebody a long time ago used to go around putting butterflies and bugs in jars and then... Um, displaying them in a picture frame and so a nicer way to do this would be to make your own scrap bug. Um, I have some examples here of um, some little moths that I've made which you could make and put in a picture frame or you could make it um, smaller and you could make it into a brooch and you could wear your own scrap moth or you could hide it in somebody's sock drawer to give them a little bit of a fright. Um, all the materials that I use are things that um, I've, you could find easily at home. So the bits of wire, bits of fabric, um, so you should easily be able to find them. And be creative and make your, your bugs or your moths as weird and wonderful as you want. So, to start off with, you need some wire. And um, you could use a paper clip, gardening wire, um, you know those funny little bits of wire you always get around cables when you get some new electrical thing, you could use that. Um, but all you need is a small amount of wire to get the body started. Next you need is a little bit of stuffing. Um, you might have an old cushion hanging around, an old pillow, or you could actually use cotton wool. And this is just to build up the shape of your moth's body. And you wrap that round the wire until you have made your moth as fat as you want it. Now, this stuffing might move around a bit. So what you want to do is something to hold it in place. And the easiest way to get the stuffing to stay in place is to just simply wrap some cotton around the stuffing and this binds the stuffing to the wire. And you don't have to sew it or do anything clever. If you just do that a few times, the stuffing will stay in place. And then you just simply cut the thread. And you have the start of your moth's body. Next thing you need to do we need to cover the moth's body and you can again find lots of things at home. You might have an old pair of socks, an old t-shirt, an old pair of tights. But it wants to be 
uh, a piece of fabric that's got a little bit of a stretch to it. So, and you only need the tiniest bit. So you could probably get away with cutting a hole in somebody's t-shirt and they wouldn't know. If you took it out of the back, nobody would ever notice. You just need enough to cover your moth. And this is where we're going to get technical. And we're going to have to do a little bit of sewing. But you don't have to be the world's greatest sewer because all of the sewing is going to be hidden underneath. And I should have pre-threaded my needle and then that would have been a lot easier. Tie a knot. And what we're going to do is, as I say, it doesn't have to look pretty at this stage because this is not going to be seen. And I'm just doing an overstitch so I'm catching both edges of the fabric and it just pulls it together in a big sausage shape. Once you've done that and you've got you've got like a tube. We need to do the ends. Now, what I just do is do a gathering stitch, or a very technical term, any outy stitch, and just pull it together, and you can just poke the stuffing inside. not very good at sewing, this is a good opportunity to learn and have a go. And then I'm just doing a couple of stitches to hold it in place. So then we have one end of our moth's body. So I need to repeat that at the other end, so I'm going to cut the thread, do another little knot, and again, just do some gathering stitches to pull the other end of the tube in to make the moth's body. So, there we have a covered moth's body. So I cut the thread. Now, at this point, I can decide which is going to be my head end and which is going to be my tail end. And I think I'm going to use this end as my head end because it's a slightly fatter end and this end as my tail end. Now, a moth has like a segmented body, and so to give it a little bit of character, we're gonna do that now. This time I'm using a dark coloured cotton because so you can see it against the fabric so you can see a distinct line but it doesn't really matter. You can make your moss whatever colour you want. I'm going to do another quick little knot. So I'm going to go in about a centimetre to make the head and I'm just going to put the needle through the fabric so it's locked onto the fabric. And then I'm gonna pull the cotton around the body quite tight. And then I'm just gonna do a couple of stitches. To lock that in place. And as you can see, that's made a divide for the head. Now, the next bit is the body of the moth. So I'm gonna go down about two centimeters and I'm gonna do the same again. And I'm just going to wrap the fabric, the cotton around the fabric quite tightly. And again, you can see it's made the segment for the body. A couple of stitches again to lock it off. And then I'm going to make smaller segments now for the tail. 
So it's probably just less than a centimetre and again wrap it round a couple of times, the stitch, lock it off. Off. So there we have the moth's body. Now for the wings, I have used scraps of curtain fabric. I think make really nice wings. But again, you could, you might have anything. You just might have scraps left over. You can actually make um, wings out of paper instead and stick them on um, rather than using fabric. So you can use your imagination. I always think maps might look nice, might make nice wings. So to make your wings, there's lots of like wing templates on the internet. I drew myself up uh, a couple of templates for me to use to cut fabric out. I basically just pinned it to the fabric and then cut the fabric to the wing shapes. You need to cut two pieces of fabric for each wing because the fabric is quite thin and you need to thicken it up a little bit. So you have options here. You could just glue your fabric together. On these ones here, I've used a sewing machine and on this one here, I've hand sewn them. Um, so it's totally up to you how you do your wings. Um, but as I say, it needs to be two pieces of fabric sewn together just to give those wings a little bit more strength. So, and so you have two larger wings and two smaller wings. So once you've sewn your wings together, then what I do is I sew the top, the larger wing, slightly over the bottom wing and just with a few stitches and then I would sew it onto the back of the moth. Can you see here on this one? I've just sewn them on here and that will keep your wings in place. Now there's one thing with moths that I really, really like is they have a little, a little wig. Now, I've got some little scraps of fur, but you could use anything with a little bit of a different texture. You might have an old fleecy blanket or an old fleecy jumper. Maybe you have a sock that's got like a woolly furry texture. And I literally just cut a little bit to go on the top. And again, you can sew this on or you can stick it on. And I just stick it over the head like so to give it a little mothy wig. Now, one of the other things that really makes the moth is its little antennae at the front. And again, all you need is a little bit of scrap wire. And I just use a pair of pliers to twizzle over the edges and bend it in the middle so you've got a little antennae and again I just sew it onto the front. Um, again you just need a couple of stitches to keep it in place. So, to attach the antennae to your moth, all you need to do is just over sew it onto the front of your moth. Again, his little fuzzy wig will kind of hide any stitches. I haven't sewn the wings onto this one, just so you can kind of see a little bit more clearly what 
what I'm doing. And that will just secure your little antennae on. So we'll cut the thread. So basically that, with the wings that you create to go on it, is your moth. So as I say, you just sew the wings on and you've got your finished moth. This basic design could be used for all sorts of different insects. You could change it slightly and make a longer body and make a dragonfly. You could make it a fatter body and make beetles instead. So this kind of um, template for making bugs can be changed and altered to make all sorts of different types of bugs. Thank you for watching um, this little video. Um, I hope you have a go at making a little scrap moth. As I said at the beginning of the video, you could put it into a frame and make it uh, into a present for somebody, or you could perhaps make a nice um, moth brooch, or how about some moth earrings? Um, I hope you enjoy making your cocktail too. Um, I'm looking forward to that bit. Um, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you for joining us at Museum After Hours. We hope you've had a most wonderful evening and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. In the meantime, it's cheers from me.